go to the surah before I get into the tafsir of it. Surah Al Kawthar is it Makki or Madani? Madani. Why? Just guess. Astronomy, <laughs> not astrology, okay? But astronomy, and he knows, okay, these stars, they, for, you know, this is the Big Dipper, this is the. the Because they studied it, you know? If you've ever been around someone they, that, ha, they, have, they have actually studied the stars, they can tell you this is this, this is that, especially when it's dark out or you're in the apps, right? And so this surah is very, it's like, it's like the opposite of Surah Al-Ma'un. It's like complete who? The munafiqun, the hypocrites. And this surah is talking about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Anything that is discussed to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also involves us, of course. He pushes away the, the orphan and he's so cheap and so stingy that not, not only does he not give to the poor but he doesn't even encourage anybody with his words. That's how cheap he is. This person is the opposite of a mu'min. Allah says we gave you. So the Muslim, the mu'min, what does he do? In, in contrast to the munafiq, he gives. Woe to those who pray and are forgetful of their prayers. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say in Surah Al-Kawthar? Fasalli. Pray. Pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The munafiq, he doesn't pray. The Muslim, the mu'min, he prays. Lirabbik. What does the munafiq do? Alladhinahum yura'u. Purity in his intaun. And they, they, they don't give any. They're cheap to even give that. Any sa'un and they, they, they don't give any, they're cheap to even give that. Any animals, we keep all of it at Surah Al Ma'un. You see how beautifully that aqsa, what do you know? Huh? So, subhanAllah, when it comes to this, Imam Al Qurtubi, he mentions 16 opinions. Imam Ibn Juzay, he mentions Kathir. Uh, Kathir. And if it comes on the pattern of Fawal, Kawthar, it means abundant, abundant, lots and lots and lots and lots and lots. Okay? The, you know, like the tank of water that's, a, that's for the mu'minun in the day of judgment, it never ends. We're all going to drink from it and it never ends. So it's kathir, kathir, kathir. That's why it's called what? al kawthar Specific to the Prophet That no other Prophet is given this honor the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, only he is given this honor of having Al-Kawthar. Inna a'taynaka Al-Kawthar. And then Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, he says, Fasal, oh, Al-Kawthar, let me give the definitions of it first. Some of them say it's the, you know, cistern. It's the hold of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Anybody know what the hold of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is on the Day of Judgment? When we go, there will, you know, there will be a hold of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, like a, a tank of water. And not like a tank, I'm just describing it, but it's going to be like ornated with gold and silver and, uh, uh, you know, like pearl. All of the things that are mentioned in the hadith. And the mu'min, he will be allowed to drink from it, from the hands of the Prophet Wasallam. May Allah give us all that. And the one who was an innovator or someone who left a religion... By innovator, I don't mean these small things like you're doing tasbih with a number thing. I'm talking about real innovation, like, like people who have left the fold of sunnah, you see? For them, they will not be drinking from the hands of the Prophet wasallam and drinking from that hold. The people that left the jama'ah, that left the community. You see what I'm trying to say? And so for these people, they will not drink from the hold of the Prophet wasallam. And um, another opinion is that it's all means of goodness, all goodness. That the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam That he's been granted And from that is that river And so The scholars they mention uh, Ibn Hajar He mentions that the, the river in Jannah Al-Kawthar Actually leads to the Hawd You see So they're both It's both It's both Al-Kawthar Is referring to the river That leads to the Hawd uh, Another opinion is that Al-Kawthar is referring to the Quran Another opinion is that Referring to Remember I said Kawthar comes from Kathir Kathir that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Sallu Alaihi His companions will be many The people who follow him after His ummah will be many and many and many That's why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam He encourages us to have lots of children And to raise them righteous in a, in a righteous way So that his ummah will be the largest ummah uh, And then Kawthar could also mean the shafa'ah That the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam The intercession 
that he will give to all of the people who have even a drop of iman in their hearts. فَصَلِّ لِرَبِّكَ وَانْحَرُ Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, okay, let me describe al-kawthar first. It's ahla min al-asal. When you drink from it, it's sweeter than honey. أَشَدُّ بَيَاضًا min al laban It'll be whiter, more white than what? Than milk. أَبْرَدْ min al thalj That it will be colder, you know, when you, on, a hot, on a hot day, you can only imagine how hot it'll be on the day of judgment. You want a cool drink. It's going to be colder than ice, but not in like a painful way, but like in a very cooling way. And the hadith says that if a person drinks from the hawd, lam yadma, he will never be thirsty after. He will never be thirsty after he drinks from the hawd. Uh, the Prophet ﷺ, he describes that, you know, it'll be, it'll be softer than like, you know, yogurt. You know, you can imagine. Softer than yogurt. You know, there's going to be pearls. There's, it's going to be, the sides are going to be, the banks are going to be like gold uh, and, and there's going to be pearls on the bottom and, the, and then the, the dirt on the bottom, the turba of the river, it's going to, when you, when you smell it, it smells better than musk. It smells better than misk. You can only imagine. Uh, that's some of the description that comes in the hadith of the Prophet Wasallam. The Prophet Wasallam, when this hadith was, when this hadith came down, you know, uh, let me, I'll go into the... Before I mention this hadith, I'm going to go into why this surah was revealed because it's very powerful and why it gives like tasliyah to the Prophet. ﷺ. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, Fasalli and pray to Allah li rabbik wan har and then sacrifice, right? Um, this is also a very comprehensive verse because, you know, when you think Fasalli li rabbik, okay, pray salah and then you sacrifice. This is not only what it's referring to, it's giving you gen specific things, but it's referring to more, uh, more broader things that we can benefit from. Fasalli. Things that are related between you and Allah Azza wa Jal. When you are given something, then you, what, what, what is expected from you? If Allah gives you something, what, what is expected from you? No. If, a, if your parent gives you a gift, what, what should you be? <laughs> Thankful, grateful. So Allah, He gives the Prophet Sallallahu Al Kawthar, when what does He expect in return? Gratitude. He expects what? Gratitude. But gratitude is not just by word, it's by action. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, the action that you show, and so imagine, think about this. Allah didn't say, you prayed, and then you sacrificed, and then we gave you kawthar. Allah gave first, and then He expected the gratitude. All of us, Allah, Allah has already given us and given us. Now He expects the gratitude. We didn't get what we got because of our ibadah, or because we're such amazing people. Rather, this is Allah showering His mercy and blessings upon us, and now we're expected to show gratitude through our actions. So again, tying it back to this, فَصَلِّ لِرَبِّكَ is your relationship with Allah. وَنْحَرْ When you sacrifice and give, it's your relationship with people. So the true gratitude to Allah Azza wa Jal is shown through actions in your relationship with Him and with people. Not just Him, but also people. Remember, we talked about that in Surah Al-Ma'un as well. إِنَّ شَانِئَكَ هُوَ الْأَبَتَرْ Now it comes the very important part. Um, I mean, this whole surah is important. But this verse was revealed about a man by the name of Al-Asi ibn Wa'il. Al-Asi ibn Wa'il. This man was such a low, low person. You know the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sallu alayhi? مَا كَانَ مُحَمَّدٌ أَبَا أَحَدٍ مِنْ رِجَالِكُمْ وَلَكِنْ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was not, he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it for him not to have any sons. He had sons, but they were never, they, they were never allowed to grow up to become men. You know, because then people will take them as messengers and follow them after. And he only had daughters. We know this of the Prophet ﷺ. He had Qasim. That's why he's called Abul, Abul Qasim. But that was before prophecy. Then he had Abdullah. And Abdullah also passed away. Qasim passed away. Abdullah passed away. Who was his last son in Medina that happened? Ibrahim. The Prophet ﷺ had three sons that passed away. Abdullah, when Abdullah passed away, imagine the feeling of a father when he has a child and he passes away. Wallahi, even if you are a low, low person, in that person you don't like him, you, you have, you're, even if he's your enemy, you're going to feel sad for them. You're going to give them condolences. Even if it's your enemy, his son just died. This man, Al-Asi Al ibn Wa'il, he said, قَدْ بُتِلْ قَدْ بُتِلْ That his, he's been cut off. He had like, he's like humiliating the Prophet ﷺ. He said, ha, look at him. He's going to have no one to carry on his legacy. He's going to have no one. It's abtar means aqta, maqtur. Means that there's like, his legacy will end here. 
because he has no sons. And so the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in response to this, in shani'ak, the one who hates you, irrationally hates you, because nobody who's rational hates the Prophet sallallahu Even if you're non-Muslim, and you know the life of the Prophet sallallahu and how he was as a human, you would love him. And if you don't, then you have something wrong with you. Or you have been fed the wrong image of the Prophet sallallahu if you read his shama'il, if you read how he was as a human, how generous he was, how, how beautiful he was with his family, how he was with his enemies, how could you hate this man? It's impossible to hate a man like Prophet ﷺ. You only want to love him. So in the shani, someone who hates him, but irrationally, for no reason, for a problem, maybe they're narcissistic, or whatever problems, that, the mental issues that they have, they are the ones that will be cut off. Al-As, this man right here, the one that, humil- that tried to humiliate the Prophet, his own sons left him and became Muslim. And he, he lost all of his wealth in his life. He became humiliated. Did you know the name of Al-As before I mentioned it today? No, you didn't. Nobody knows him. Nobody cares about him. He's gone. His legacy is no legacy. He's in the dirt. But the Prophet wasallam, Allah tells him that your enemy will be the one cut off. But you, Ya Muhammad wasallam, you will stay connected. And how many of us every single day we send salawat upon the Prophet Sallallahu Every salah we send salawat Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on the minbal in our day-to-day life, in our salah. Billions of people remembering the Prophet. Now tell me who's cut off. Now tell me who's cut off. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, see, in this is a mu'jiza, in this is like a miracle. The fact that Allah predicted this, that this is going to happen. And so... Uh, let, let, let's go to some of the, the points of this surah. Oh, let me go to the hadith. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was, you know, he was like laying down and napping and he woke up. And when he woke up, he was smiling. And the, the Sahaba, they asked, Ya Rasulullah, why are you smiling? And, and he said, Allah, you know, recently revealed to me a surah, Inna a'atinaka al-kawthar, fasalli li rabbika wanhar, inna shani aka huwa al-abatar. And he said, do you know what kawthar is? And so the Prophet, they said, no, Allah, Allah and His Messenger know best. He said, it is a river in Jannah. And so all of the ahadith when describing what is Kawthar, it describes it as a river in Jannah. So the scholarly interpretation comes from the linguistic side. Al-Kawthar means things that are plenty, plentiful. But when we look at the ahadith, it's talking about the river in Jannah. So now that we've discussed it, and I was going through it quickly because it's late. Some of the lessons that we could take from this surah. Number one, this surah is kind of like to boost the spirit of the Prophet Sallallahu and a gift to the Prophet Sallallahu Just like Surah Al-Sharh, Alam Nashrah Laka Sadarak, and just like Wadduha Wal-Layli Idha Saja. This is similar to those two surahs in that. And another thing is how Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, He looks after and He protects, He protects His beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this is also glad tidings for everyone who loves Allah and everyone who Allah loves. That Allah will look after you and He will protect you. Even if you have enemies, people that are looking down on you, they, they, have, they have your worst interest in mind, Allah will protect you. The third thing is that the way you can fight off evil, imagine you have people talking against you, they have the worst interest in your mind, you know, is not by fighting them, by going and talking against them. You know, a lot of times you see Muslims, they'll be endlessly debating on YouTube. I don't know if you go on YouTube, they have speakers corner, you've seen that before. All they do is they stand there, ah, da, 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 ah, da, 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 You think this is how Islam is going to spread? By you standing there and debating back and forth? Unless it's actually intellectual, but screaming over each other is not getting us anywhere. You see? So the best way to fight the enemy is not by focusing on him. You know? A person who is kabir, someone who's you know, elevated in himself, he's not going to be focusing on his enemy. Rather, he's going to be focusing on his own work. So the best way to fight evil is by doing good. You see, the best way to fight evil is by doing good work. And that is inshallah what we're doing in this masjid, alhamdulillah. Uh, Another thing is that uh, the impact of ikhlas in in any successful matter. فَصَلِّ لِرَبِّكْ So the Prophet ﷺ, he had ikhlas. And that ikhlas is what led him to be successful. So if you want to be successful in any of our feats or things that we want in life, we should also have that Sincerity in mind. Uh, of course, that shukr comes immediately after blessings. We have been blessed with so much, so we should be expected to have shukr in our own lives. And another thing, the Prophet ﷺ, his life was not easy. 
He, you see that he lost all three of his sons. The Prophet ﷺ, his life, he lost his father, he lost his mother, he lost his grandfather, he lost his uncle, he lost his wife. He lost his beloved companions, he saw them passing away, the ones that stood up for him. He saw his companions being tortured, he himself was tortured, he had to migrate. He suffered so much hardship, he saw his companions die in front of him in battle. He saw his uncle's insides being eaten up. The Prophet ﷺ experienced pain that none of us have experienced. And yet all of those hurdles were necessary. So anytime you, know, uh, you see hurdles in your life, don't be discouraged. If in order to be successful, the most successful people, they all went through hurdles. That's part of the process of life. You know, right now, p- perhaps our life is going on a smooth pace, but hurdles come. You never know. You know, death comes, sickness comes, whatever comes. These are hurdles of life. We have to keep the, we have to keep moving forward. And uh, the Prophet ﷺ himself, he went through hurdles, and that is part of the journey of any successful person. And the last thing I want to mention is the importance of salah. See how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after, after mentioning this scenario, you know, the Prophet is you know, being talked out against and his son just passed away. What does he mention? Salah. That connection that we have with Allah Azza wa Jal is not a, just a means of just finishing our chores, but rather to give us that peace and heart, uh, peace at mind and peace in heart. If there's any reflections from the surah, from what we covered, yes. Yeah. 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 Well, I don't remember the verses, but there's the ayah. فَلْيَأْتُوا بِسُورَةٍ مِّنْ مِثْلِ Let them come with a surah like that of the Quran, and this is the shortest surah, so this is what is expected, and they could not even come up with it. You know, even when he said it, his own companions, he says, they said, "Wallahi, you know this isn't Quran. <laughs> Wallahi, you know this isn't Wahi. You're lying straight out of your teeth." You know, because the Quran, its uslub, its style is very different than all of poetry. Anything that you could find in the Arabic language. So even its linguistic side is miraculous. But for those that are not in 